Hello everyone, Ken here, back with another video where I review your resumes, projects, and portfolios. Special thanks to Anurag for letting me review his work in this video. If you want to have your projects, resumes, or portfolios reviewed, please comment below and let me know. Also shoot me an email at keng.ds at gmail.com. So I think that this one will be a really cool review. Anurag's portfolio is a little bit different, uh, also his resume is a little different than ones we've seen before, so hopefully this will give you some fairly unique insight into how to improve your own. Without further ado, let's hop into his GitHub here. So I believe Anurag is a student still, I think he has one internship under his belt. So you know he has six, six uh, different repos, which I think is generally good, it, it looks like he's working hard on improving his skills. Something that I haven't mentioned before is this kind of heat map of how often people are on GitHub. That's something that I think is, is pretty interesting. How often you're using GitHub is an interesting metric that some people go for. So if you have a really consistent pattern there, I think that that can be generally a pretty good thing. Obviously in May, he's put a lot of effort in, but in June, maybe he's fallen off. So it, it's not a problem, especially if you're a student, if you kind of have a cyclical pattern but it really impresses a lot of people to see a, a fairly consistent data science uh, um, or, or consistent posting to your repos uh, here. So I think he only has one project as of right now and for a college student, that's totally fine, especially if you're, early, you're in your earlier years, but I would always encourage you to go out and build more and more projects. You wanna have at least three or four probably even closer to seven or eight by the time you're finished with school and you're applying for full-time positions. So let's go into the project that he wanted me to look at. So in this one, he evaluates data for the Indian general election. He does an exploratory analysis, and then he also does a logistic regression classifier. So this I think is a really good readme. He has a nice picture here. It's kind of bolded with what he's trying to do. Um, and this is the first time uh, in these reviews that I've seen one of these, which is a table of contents, which kind of skips to the different sections. So I, I really like that. I think he has the source data. He has a lot of the things that he needs. One thing that I don't see is on the same page, a, a, some insights about his findings. So he has these links that take to the analysis and then the model, but your goal is to make the experience as seamless as possible for the recruiter or, whoever, or whoever's looking at it. And to do that, you just want to put everything on one page uh, and just make it very easy for them. They can just glance at it and they know what they're seeing. So one thing that he did that was really cool is he made a, a kind of more advanced portfolio website just for this project. And so let's take a look at that. So. I mean, in theory, he can put a bunch of his projects here, but I, I like the aesthetic of this. It's very simple. I assume he's gonna be putting more projects on here soon. So this, each project kind of has their own page. I believe this is in his GitHub uh, portfolio, how to build this, and he used JavaScript and a couple different uh, packages, which I think is pretty cool. Now, um, in this, we can click on insights here. This is the exploratory analysis. I would have loved to have seen a couple of these graphs and some explanations for them in the, um, in the actual readme, but I like how he explains the analysis here. To me, this looks really good. It's very colorful. You know, one thing that I see that it kind of has a bad, um, a bad rep in data science and business analytics communities is pie charts. You actually don't generally want to use pie charts a lot of people don't believe that they convey very useful information. I, I think that they do have use cases, but on the off chance that you get someone going through your portfolio that has a vendetta against them, you might not want to include them. There are plenty of other different types of charts that you can use that can convey the exact same information. Also this violin plot, I, I really like, you don't see them that often. They do, um, some people believe look a little bit inappropriate. Uh, but I, I think that this is a, a great use case for them as well. I like that you experimented, uh, that he experimented with a bunch of different types of visuals, different colors. Um, if I were to kind of have him go back through this again, I'd maybe choose one uniform color palette though. 
just so that all of the graphs, you know, are, um, you know, have the same kind of feel to them. So that's a semantic change that's aesthetic, aesthetic, not something you would have to do, just kind of my personal preference. So you can take that one or leave it. Uh, the next one we can look at the prediction code. So again, he has a table of contents, which I really like, especially for longer notebooks. That's a good practice, I think. So he goes through, he processes the data, he handles the missing values, and I like that he talks about why he chose to drop rather than impute. I think that whenever you're making a decision in the data set, you should include a little bit of text about why you made that decision. That looks really good. That's part of good documentation in general. Now going down, we see that um, you know, he, he scaled the data, which generally isn't needed in a logistic regression, but in theory, it never really hurts to scale your data. Uh, so he's predicting the winner. And again, this all looks pretty good. Um, again, for, uh, for a college student, I think that this is a, a pretty good and advanced and robust project. I would, of course, remind him to continue to build out a couple more of these if he really wants to put his best foot forward for additional internships and eventually a full-time position. Now let's take a look at his resume. So this resume is very different than any that we've seen in this series before. I really like the aesthetic. It looks very, you know, put together. It looks very organized. I like the kind of color essence, etc. But unfortunately, this hexagon pattern is not something we want. So if you're using a, a lot of these companies use basically like automatic uh, resume scan systems and it might not be able to read Python or SQL where there's overlap with the background. So for these, you generally wanna make sure that you have a clean, solid color background surrounding any text. I think it's perfectly fine to have like the blue accent like that. It looks really nice. It's fine to have icons and logos. It's even fine to have a graph like this, but you wanna make sure that all of the text is very uh, clearly legible. You know, this is something that really pops out I think that this is a nice visual, but it isn't as specific as I would like. So the first thing I notice, he has Kaggle competitions. He says he spends a quarter of his time doing this, maybe even more than that. I don't see a link to Kaggle on his resume. So that's definitely something I would recommend that he includes. He also says that he wants to, that he's learning new skills. I'm a big believer in showing rather than telling. So maybe a couple bullets about some of the new things that he's learning would be valuable. So maybe it's reinforcement learning. Maybe it's uh, some type of clustering. Just, you know, make sure you're, you're showing the skills that you're, that you're learning as much as you're talking about them. Same thing goes for analyzing real world data. That's a great place to actually link the GitHub project that we reviewed earlier. And the last thing, same thing with the articles. You can link a couple of your favorite articles. Uh, as I've mentioned before in, in my resume, I actually link a couple of my favorite books that I've read most recently. For the Find Me Online, I think that's something you can also put at the top with your GitHub and hopefully your Kaggle profile uh, as well. So there's two more things about this resume. Again, I really like the aesthetic. I think it's very clean, but you do want to convey just a little bit more information. So I talk a lot about this in some of the previous resume reviews but you really wanna have a bit more depth in explaining your past work. That's the thing that is most important to people. So you wanna have an action verb followed by a quantitative outcome followed by a method. So maybe it's uh, collected, you know, 100,000 you know, different data po points from uh, various websites, helping reduce uh, data collection time of data scientists by like 20%, right? That's something that it has a clear outcome, it's quantifiable, and it's action oriented. So I would make sure that you take the work that you've done and you try to, try to put it into that frame when you're describing it. The next thing I see is that there aren't any projects on here. I really always recommend that you talk about your projects on your resume. I look at those very similar to how I look at work. Those are things that are concrete and they can show the skills that you have. So that is, again, talking about that show rather than tell uh, type of philosophy. So 
you know, I don't look at them exactly the same as as previous work experience, but it's it's very very close for me. So I would make sure that he includes that uh, GitHub project and also any of the Kaggle projects that he's worked on. That is, you know, both of those things. If you don't have the opportunity to have real world work experience through internships and jobs, those are the next best thing. So I hope that this review helps him, um, helps Anurag. I, I do really like the resume format. I think his project work for, for where he's at in his education is really strong and he should keep doing what he's doing and I think it'll inevitably lead into a full-time role. I hope for anyone watching this helps you think about uh, how a recruiter is going to go through your resume or your profile and how you want to make it as simple for them or any you know technology they're using to evaluate resumes uh, as possible. So as usual, thank you so much for watching and good luck on your data science journey.